Today's topic is about handwriting letters. At the first part of this video, I'll be showing the tools that I used for writing my letters while I discuss actually writing a letter, and then we'll go into the actual letter writing itself. This video is geared specifically toward letter writing with your fountain pens and your fountain pen accoutrements. There's generally three reasons why you would hand write a letter. One would be personal, just for to friends. The other one is for condolences, and I would make it a point to send a condolence as a handwritten letter instead of typewritten or an email. It just makes it more meaningful. And then lastly, you could do a business handwritten letter, but that's mainly if you're trying to get someone's attention because all letters are pretty much well by email or typewriter. If you are going to handwrite a business letter, just go ahead and follow the business format. So we'll be talking about personal letters. When you write a personal letter, the general format is to put the date in the upper right hand corner and then a salutation on the upper left hand side. A salutation could be like, Dear Elisa, Hey Elisa, or Elisa with a comma after it, or Hey You, or any of those kinds of combinations. And then you would have the body of the actual letter itself. But I tend to like to have the first sentence or two to be something like, thank you for your last letter, or I hope you are doing well, or the weather's just been really awful lately. This is not any kind of rule. It's just something I'd like to do. The Japanese, when they write letters, it is so strict on the opening and closing that they have kind of this intro line for every month of the year. So I'll go ahead and read you the Japanese one. It's Rishun to wa nabakari de samui hi ga tsuzuite orimasu ga, which means the first day of spring is but a name as cold days continue. And that would be what you would write at the beginning of your letter when you're writing in the month of February. But we're not writing a Japanese letter. And the rules for personal letters are very loose. And it's just a suggestion to kind of open up the body of your a letter with some sort of introduction. Then you would write the rest of the body of the letter. And again, I like to have a close out like, I hope you take care of yourself or take care or I hope your family's doing well. You don't need to, but it's just a nice way to kind of draw the body of the letter down. Then you would have your closing, which is like sincerely or see you in the next letter or just take care, comma, something of that nature. And then you would have your signature. And then after that is the postscript if you want to. Uh, postscript is where you have the PS and if something you had forgotten in the body of the letter, you could add to it like, oh, thank you very much for the pictures or something like that. Many fountain pen users end up getting pen pals to use their fountain pens with. To look for pen pals, you can check out the pen pal section of Fountain Pen Network or the hashtag penpalswanted on Instagram. You can also Google post crossings and penpal world. I'll leave all of those in a pinned comment down below. My friend here in Tokyo, Quay, she is Mirai Cat on Instagram, does pen pal type stuff, and she has some beautiful spreads on her Instagram. These people are pros. <laughs> I'm not artistic or talented at this at all, but I'd like to show you that even me, with my limited abilities, I can have fun writing to pen pals and just kind of messing around with my fountain pens. One of the nice things about having a pen pal is you get all kinds of cool stuff in the mail. This is from my pen friend Kat, and she used Sailor Studio 123 and 162 in a water brush full strength to make this picture. When you write to pen pals, you can include your artwork. Sometimes I've had people send me like a little tea bag of their favorite tea, and I've even sent very small rocks inside of a letter. Kat is so talented, she even did this really cool drawing on the envelope of the letter she sent me. Another of my pen pals sends me these beautiful handmade cards and her handwriting is just gorgeous. I've got it kind of fuzzed out to protect her identity, but I can't write like this. 
and another pen pal sends me these really haunting pictures that are in black and white from old cameras that she's bought. I scrapbook them because they're so beautiful and so unusual. Another pen pal of mine who we literally write to each other like once a year. He's a wonderful photographer and pastes these beautiful photos on the front of the cards he sends me. And here's a picture of his cat looking down into the camera. You can use a pen pal to practice another language. And the YouTuber Chris Rap 52 sent me some comic strips in his letter. And my longest running pen pal is a friend from high school. She just recently sent me a bunch of pictures and old letters that we had written to each other like 30 years ago. Other than just logging in this little green book, when I've sent a letter to someone, I don't keep closed tabs on what I write. I actually have a friend that takes a copy of every single one of the letters he sends so that he knows what he wrote last. When it comes time to write back to my pen pals, I like to kind of make it a fun thing. So I get myself some tea, put on some music, and then gather up all my pens and inks and things that I want to use to write to my pen pals. So grab a cup of tea and then I'll go over how I write back to a friend that writes very short letters and I write very short letters back to her. And then also I'm writing a letter back to Chris Rap 52 and also to one of my longest pen pals, Jackie. The easiest way to write back to a pen pal is just to use pre-made stationery. I like these because it's like a little card and I can keep my letter nice and short. One of the things I learned from Susan Worth, she used to go to a lot of the pen shows, she has since then passed away, is when you write something, make the first letter splashy. You can like make it bigger or make it curlier. And then she said like the rest of the letter, you can just kind of write like normal, but that first letter just kind of makes it a little bit cooler. So I just stuck a big D at the end, at the beginning of dear. I didn't fill in the, the name because I want to protect the person's privacy. And then of course I put the date in the upper right corner. There is absolutely nothing wrong with short letters. As a matter of fact, this pen pal is one of my longest running pen pals because we keep it pretty short and simple and we just kind of talk about the pen we use and the ink we use and it makes it pretty fun. If you don't know what you want to talk about in a letter, you could start with just your fountain pens and your inks. I don't think I've ever gotten a letter from anyone where we haven't at least talked about the fountain pen they were using and the ink they were using. You could also talk about your other hobbies, uh, places that you've traveled, maybe a little bit about where you live, or even like your family members. I've received so much wet mail that I'm very concerned about the address, so I want to make sure that it's waterproof. You can use a Sharpie to write the address, or even a straight up ballpoint pen. What I do is I use a dedicated pen with waterproof ink. This Riallo is filled with Eye Papers Night Sky, which is a waterproof ink. I usually keep one pen of all my inked up pens with um, waterproof ink in it for writing addresses on letters or just something that I'm worried about uh, where I don't want to lose the writing if it were to get wet. You can also just use regular ink and then spray on a fixative or use this micro glaze stuff. It's kind of like a wax and you put it on over your writing very, very lightly though. You can also put scotch tape over the top of the address. It will get, like say if it gets wet on the side, it could seep under, but by then you've probably had a lot of rain and your letter's probably destroyed. Here you can see I'm putting just a very, very small amount of this micro glaze on the upper address here. And it needs to be very, very, very light. And then you just kind of buff it out. I wrote the address on the front and then I wrote my return address on the back. It's kind of covered with this heart and wings labradorite stone. I put a piece of washi tape on it and looking at it I feel like this 
this letter needs some ducks. And then we'll just pop a cool stamp on it. And then I like to log that I wrote and sent out the letter, but there's really no need to do that. Next, I'm going to convert plain Tomoa River paper into kind of a fountain pen inky stationery. I'm using a Pilot Parallel 6.0, about the only time this thing is useful for me. And it's got Cat as Midnight in it. And I'm just kind of running the ink right down the side of the paper. It doesn't have to be really straight or really precise because I'd be in trouble if it had to be. I also did one with Jacques Garbon's Vert Atlantide. And to make it even more simple, I just used a paintbrush to put Kala's Star Ruby on the side of a piece of paper. And then I just used a paintbrush with water to kind of thin out the edges there to kind of blend into the paper. I did it with the Cat is Midnight and then here with the Vert Atlantide and then also with the Kala Star Ruby. I lifted this technique straight from the Inkanuma ladies over here in Tokyo. Here I'm just making some ink splots with Tono and Lim's Arctic Aurora. On a separate piece of paper I'm doing the ink splots on the bottom of the paper. I left the papers to dry all except for the one that had the ink splots on the bottom. I used a wet sponge and a brush with some water to kind of spread the ink all over like this. It looks best if you make sure that you kind of cover it all the way down to the bottom and it gets pretty wet. After about 15 minutes, you can set down another piece of paper on top of it to kind of flatten it a little bit, only for about five minutes and then it should be fine. Arctic Aurora looks really cool when you mix it with water like this. It's the ink for Mr. Takahito Hongo. He's the salesperson at Okamotoya and he's like an ink expert. All right, we let the papers dry and now I'm writing a letter to Jackie. This is the Tomoa River paper that I used uh, with a paintbrush and Kala's Star Ruby ink. And then I went back over it again with a little bit of water to blend it into the paper. And using Susan Worth's technique, I made the D on Deer giant and kind of curly Q, and now I'm just writing like normal. And here I'm spreading the Kala ink with a letter opener. This is a letter from a fountain pen person to another fountain pen person, so you should feel free to give them little ink splotches and ink smears so they can check out the ink. And now I'm changing it up and I'm showing her what Cat is Midnight looks like with a drill log. Again, that's real common for a fountain pen type letter to talk about your fountain pen or your utensils and your ink. And now I'm showing what Cat is Midnight looks like with a flex dip pen. And in typical fountain pen fashion, I changed up fountain pens and inks and am now explaining it to Jackie. As you can see, I numbered the page at the top there. You don't need to number pages, but it does help the reader and you definitely don't need to number the first page. And then I changed up ink again and did some flex writing. One of the things I like to do is blow through the nib onto the paper. It kind of gives a light spatter on the paper. And I was trying to show that you could help it out by unscrewing the pen and then forcing a little bit extra more ink into the feed and then you could blow through it. It's a cool technique that I learned from Ralph of Regalia Writing Labs, but I forgot the pen I was using. I had eye droppered it and then I spilled ink everywhere. I just blotted it up and then kind of wrote back over it. And here's a technique of me blowing through the nib and you can see it splattering the paper. Here's a close up of that and it looks pretty cool, I think. And here you can see I kind of had to write back over the ink blob. Okay, I closed out my last paragraph and said see you in the next letter as a closing. Sign my name and just for fun I added my honko. And then a stamp of some fountain pens. 
and then I decided it would be fun to play with some fire on camera and decided to use these babies. My setup is pretty simple. You can get like these little containers with spirit lamps and have a whole process. Basically you just need some sealing wax and some fire. I'm going to use this little micro torch. This is a beautiful wax seal from my pen pal Gary. I typically put my wax seals inside of a letter because I feel like they're going to get busted up by the machines at the post office, but he had a really good solution that he wrapped the whole letter in the cellophane along with the address and it covered up the wax seal and protected it. But I'm going to end up putting a wax seal next to my name, so I'm heating up the wax over where I want to drop it. I know a lot of experts are probably cringing at this, but remember, I have no talent and I still made it through this letter. <laughs> you can also use like a, a lighter for your candle and in a, in a tight spot, you can also use some matches. I'm sure that probably scares people, but it's pretty fun. And then you press into the seal just for a couple of seconds. And then you have yourself a pretty cool little wax seal. And now I'm writing to Chris from the YouTube channel, Chris Rap 52. And as you can see, I did the splotches on this paper and I'm just gonna write around them. And that way Chris can get like a kind of a splotch test letter. And on the second page on my letter to Chris, you can see I'm using that Arctic uh, Aurora inked page, so I can only use the upper half. Also, you can see in the top that I had used washi tape to um, tape the letter to a guide so I could kind of keep my lines halfway straight. And then I just pull it off of the guideline paper and just fold the washi tape over the top. Then using the envelope, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna fold the paper. I fold up the paper and then I decide I haven't had enough mishaps today and want to play with some more fire. I decided I was going to use some blue and some vanilla colored wax and my micro torch ran out of like fuel or something so now I'm using a candle lighter. That also ran out and so I decided to use a match and I think I almost got the paper caught on fire but I managed to seal up the letter. Chris, I hope you appreciate the danger I put myself through for this letter. And Chris's envelope looks like it needs some dinosaurs. I hope I've shown you today that you don't need any artistic ability because I don't have any, and you don't need to have good handwriting to write a letter to someone and, and really enjoy your inks and your fountain pens. It makes it even more special if you can write to someone who's also interested in fountain pens or ink. I'm going to leave you with a display for the Hinamatsuri or Girls Festival. It is of the Emperor and Empress during the Hainan period and then their courtesans and all their finery. It's celebrated on March 3rd. If you were even mildly entertained by this video, I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe.